Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. Today I've got two replays in the Western Alliance Era 1 Tank Destroyer, the Charioteer A. Why they've put the A there, who knows, just to be able to differentiate it from World War 2 version probably. Because it's basically pretty much exactly the same. In that it's a very stealthy tank destroyer, it has nice alpha, it has good shell velocity, it has good pen, and you've got some dirty hash. Which is always nice. But in Cold War, the Charioteer is a little bit dirtier, to be honest. I have loved playing this tank so far. It's really, really dirty because the gun is nice. Although it's got the Era 1 derpiness. And by that, I mean that you'll fully aim shots and the gun just goes... <laughs> and, you know, just misses. Because why not? And you sit there going, why? Why did that miss? But you hit shots like that on the move with Hesh, although it didn't pen. Because reasons. And yeah, it it basically likes to miss shells here and there that are really, really irritating. And the Hesh likes to not pen things as well that it really probably should, and it can be quite annoying. But, as you see, the camo on this tank is absolutely dirty. The camo on this tank is utter filth. And it just doesn't get spotted. Which is definitely a very beautiful thing. And yeah, I mean with the setup I've got, I've got it down to 104 meters of still concealment. Which is really good. You know, that's running the camo net and having the smoke. And you just basically struggle to get spotted. And with the camo being so good, you can basically play it like a scout. And just surprise people with your gun and stuff like that. I mean, you've seen that in this in this first game, this first of three replays, where we're basically playing it very on the front foot, very aggressively, in a spot where we're just spotting for our team, and the assistance, assistance is going to just roll in. And, yeah, YOLO in NM116 is that... I don't know why he's doing that, because if we just load Hesh, we're going to absolutely eviscerate him. Because the Hesh is also dirty, because that's one of the other differences, getting onto it, and that was the point I was trying to think of. Was that the ammo is different on this tank, because you get 268 penetration on your standard APCR. You get a premium round for 300 APCR pen, but you never need it, because 268 pen is going to pen everything you will face at in this era. It's enough for everything, so there's just no point in 300 pen. You may as well stick with the standard pen and thus make a lot of credits because it also makes a lot of juicy, juicy cred creds. And then you can use the ammo swapper and have the Hesh for 210 pen and hit for 480 and do some dirty amount of damage with that Hesh round, as long as it pens, naturally. So in terms of a crew, on the charioteer i run a born leader rapid reload six cents situational awareness steady aim run and gun camouflage expertise silent driving and muffled shot all the camo perks because like i say this tank is dirty with its camo and i want to make that camo as good as possible so i want to make it so that i my camo doesn't get affected as much by firing i want to make it so that my camo is just generally better with the camo expertise and silent driving so that my Camo really isn't affected that much because it is that good. The camo isn't really affected that much by being on the move. So that's why I run those perks. And in terms of equipment, I run the advanced rammer, the advanced reload, and the camo net. So the camo net, naturally, to make my tank absolutely invisible. Because you put a camo net on the tank destroyer in cold war, it just becomes invisible. The camo just gets reduced so much. It's really good. Then you've got the ammo swap, like I say, to switch between the standard hesh and... Well, sorry, the standard APCR and the Hesh and a rammer to make your DPM as good as humanly possible. I mean, you don't really need to do too much to the gun. That's why I run steady aim and run a gun. I run run a gun because I like to take a few shots on the move here and there, like you've already seen in this replay. But you've got 0 0.3 accuracy base, which is fantastic. You've got 1.9 second aim time, which aims in really quickly. Naturally, you've got fairly bad dispersions on the move and turning the turret and stuff like that. But it is what it is. And, yeah, so I just want to make sure that the camo is as good as possible. I don't really naturally need to make the gun any better than it already is. It just does have that derpy moment where the gun decides, Nah, mate, not today. I'm not hitting that shot. But you can do some pretty filthy things with it, which is nice. Just make sure you are fully aimed in. And as you've seen with this first replay, with some of the rolls we're getting with the Hesh, this was before they changed the RNG values, so that we low rolled a lot. But we do finish with the 
victory, 5 kills, nearly 4k damage, nearly 6k assistance, that was nearly 10k combined. The Ace Tanker, 1936 base XP, a really nice game for the Charioteer A, and... It was basically a light tank game. We basically played as a light tank, spotted for our team, and then slapped people with our big gun, which is really nice. And you can just play it that way. Because of the camo, and having muffled shot is beautiful for the tank because of the ability to stay unspotted, you can move into some really aggressive positions. And as long as someone hasn't clocked you as you're going across, you can just capture people by surprise and then really work them over with this fantastic gun. And also just the camo being fantastic. I mean, the moment you realise lots of people look at you, you just pop the smoke and then they can't see you anymore, which is always a beautiful thing. And it's the same thing as when, because you are a tank destroyer, you have very bad turret traverse. And the light tanks in this era like to YOLO a lot. In era one, the, the light tanks just, well, in fact, in Cold War in general, the light tanks generally go full sending into... It's basically that they're all like vanguards. That's the best way of putting it for World War II perspective. They're all like vanguards, so they just all YOLO into the, your base all the time and YOLO around people. And they like to go to tanks like the Charioteer because they've got a slow turret traverse and you really do struggle to keep up with them. So you might want to run rapid aim because the turret traverse is quite bad, right? That's always a one that you could pick. But you have the smoke for that. If a light tank yellows, you just go, well, I'll pop smoke. It makes it very difficult for them to RBRT you because that's basically what they're all doing when they're running around. No, none of them are aiming properly. They're just holding RB and auto-aiming on you. So you put, pop the smoke. makes it difficult for them to do that. And it's a very, very useful tool. As well as the fact that the premium smoke knocks your camo down by another, like, 20%, something like that, which is definitely a beautiful thing. So this first game, well, this first game, it's not even the first game, it's the second game. The second replay, we're on Vineyards, and we are, well, we've made the push along this AB line, because this AB line is the best way to go for our spawn, essentially, and if we push across the AB line and push aggressively, we can get into a position where we can hopefully shoot the people that do camp on their 9 line, because naturally with True Vision, we can just see them. And so I'm going to push up to this ridge over here. I like to push up to where the, the house is on this little hill. Because you can get up to this little ridge. Stay in cover from anyone on JK9. But you can also start shooting the people that are, well, we're looking at right now. And I've got a little ridge line to hide behind from them too. And as you've seen, oh, we shouldn't have taken that shot. That was just bad patience really. And we're just trying to get some shots into this T95E2 who is just full sending. Get a nice shot again into his side. And we're just going for the Hesh now because we've got the top of this T95E3. I'm thinking the Hesh will go in. 345. Okay. Well, at this point I'm going, why am I loading Hesh? 119! Well, yeah, that didn't pen, because the T95E3's Capola isn't a guaranteed pen for the Hesh, unfortunately. Try and get a shot into the side of his turret, but he turns his turret just at the last second, so it doesn't quite go in. Which is, again, another sad time. Should it be firing APCR, really, at the T95E3? And a lot of the time, it is a choice of, should you be firing APCR or the Hesh? Because sometimes there are tanks that are just very, very awkward to fire Hesh at. And you probably would be just best at firing the, the AP. But the Hesh is such a valuable thing to use at times. Because it can get you out of some very, very bad situations. So as you can see, their teams come steamrolling in out of nowhere. And we're starting to have... Well, we're under pressure now. We're starting to have to keep putting the shots in. This 5-1 looked like he was absolutely charging at me. And I decided I didn't want to get RBRT'd by him. So I popped the smoke to make sure that he couldn't hit me. And then we're now using the smoke to be able to pop up and try and shoot people if we can. We're trying to RBRT a shot at the 5-1, but it didn't quite go in. This other 5-1 then is actually coming in. It's like, wait a minute, what? I didn't expect this. We get a nice shot into the back of him there that tracks him, and he gets shot down. Which is nice. And so far we're up to 2.6k damage with 1100 assistance. We pop up and spot the T95E3. So this is the great thing about the camo of this tank. Again, this must have been before the RNG changes to the damage, because... We're ro low rolling like a Madden all the time. Anyway, yeah, this is the nice thing about the camo, right? Because we are always... Obviously, naturally, they can still see me. So if they're looking at me, they're going to see me. But I can always pop up, spot them, and shoot at them before they will see me. Which is always nice because 
especially in Era 1, people just aren't paying attention half the time. And you can really abuse the fact that the, you go unspotted and you just pop up and keep shooting them. And uh, again, naturally, you, if you look over the ridge lines and stuff like that, using the free, what, using the camera, you can always see where they are generally. So, right now we're shooting at these guys right in the distance because they are attacking quite aggressively. And we've got a shot in to shut down the T-34. Hopefully going to get a shot into this SU to shut him down as well. We get a nice shot into the back end there, which doesn't roll high enough to kill him. But he's gone, which helps out our friends on the H-2 line. And now we're going to move forward because there's only four tanks left. There's two Tyrans and two T-44s. One gets spotted over there. And it's like, well, can I get some shots at him? Can't quite see him to get a shot. But we do end up spotting the T-44 sitting on the hill. Aim all the way in. Shoot the Hesh in for 394 again. Sit there going, why did I bother loading Hesh? It's not that bad these days now with the RNG changes because, well, you actually do damage, which is nice. You actually hit that near 480 mark, which is always great. Now that T95E3 is in a bit of an awkward spot. I didn't expect the T95E3 to still be there, to be perfectly honest. And... It's, just, it's going to make it a little bit awkward. We load the APCR because we can guarantee go through the T95V3 with the APCR. We get a nice shot through into him, but then pop the smoke. Because it's like, well, that, that gives me the chance to be able to reload before he comes for me. And hopefully I won't take a hit while I pop a shot at him. He ends up spotting us, but again, the smoke does its job. That guy had no clue where we are. He just plowed through the smoke and we managed to get the shot in to kill him the tyran 6 is now tyran 4 sorry is now charging us and we have hessian because i can pen the T tyran 4 with the hesh because it's just basically a t54 and we get a nice shot into his side there which is great 483 this is an awkward situation though where i'm i know i'm probably gonna die and we try and get another hesh shell in through the side but it this doesn't go in. We should have loaded a it's at the point now where we should have loaded APCR, especially for that shot. We should have loaded APCR because we would have gone through him guaranteed there. We're just trying to avoid getting killed by him though in his gun. So as he's coming over, I'm like, can I track him in place? Yes, I can. We get the assistance for tracking him in place, stopping him chasing me, and therefore we don't have to die. I finished the game with the victory. Two kills, 5.7k damage, 3.3k assistance, the ace tanker. 2085 base XP and basically 9k combined which is a really nice game for the charioteer it's honestly a very very solid entry era tank destroyer because it does everything well it's got a nice gun it's got great mobility it's got fantastic camo if you were wanting to learn how to play a camo tank, this is one that's probably good because you've got pretty decent view range as well. And you can use the good mobility, the good gun, the great camo to really, really good effect. And this tank is just a very, very solid tank to play. A lot of fun in World War II, a lot of fun in this era as well. And we're on to the third and final replay. And in this replay, we're on Nominee Nom. And on Nominee Nom... We are going to go to D4 from this spawn. I want to go to D4, C4 around those ridges so that I can try and spot anyone that crosses the 1 2, get free shots into them, and, you know, I can shoot people as well from that ridge line at where we were looking there at E1. Naturally, as we were coming up here, I mean, it's a bit early really, because unless it was something super, super quick, we were never going to see it. It's never going to be there already. We'll keep an eye on the ridge lines to see if anything popped up before we got here so that, you know, we can get some free shots at them using the true vision. Always be aware. That is always the thing. If you know where people tend to like to go sit, just, just have a glance, you know, have a gaze to see if anything is there and see if you can get some free shots essentially because if, if people aren't spotted they will tend to just sit still and sit in a position and you can basically get a free fully aimed shot at someone because naturally their detector doesn't go off either because they're not spotted so we get a nice shot with the apcr straight through that m48 pattern there and we're just starting to spot their team as they're making crosses. We load the Hesh because there's a TVP. And unfortunately, we just don't aim it well enough and it, it doesn't go in. The M103A1 is also making moves. We try and throw a Hesh round at him there. Again, a bad choice of round, really. We should have just loaded the APCR and we would have been able to get him. There we go. We switch back to the APCR, though. And I do load the Hesh because, again, I'm still looking for shots at the TVP. But we get a nice shot into the M103 and 
he ends up getting shot down. We reload the Hesh again. I pop the smoke at the guys on my left so that I can poke over and stay safe from them while I shoot their TVP friend in the ass with Hesh. That's where the tactical use of smoke is very, very nice because those guys were looking to get shots at me. Which meant that it would have been very annoying to poke over and start trying to get shots at their TVP. So what I did is I popped smoke so that they couldn't shoot me. And it was also covering my friends because then, you know, they couldn't see my friends either. And we managed to then poke over and get some shots into the TVP with the Hesh. And we got another shot into the TVP there with the Hesh that sets him on fire. Beautiful things. And he's gone. We get a nice Hesh round there through the T-44A. And this is where the Hesh is lovely stuff. Because you can just keep popping these big damage rounds straight through these guys. And as you can see, this is where the RNG has definitely been changed. Because we're getting some very, very juicy rolls with this Hesh. And we delete that poor T-44A that was probably a brand new player, let's be real. And we now are in a position where we can start getting shots into the M48PL. And the Hesh round went true there which is quite nice really for saying it wasn't really that fully aimed went straight into his engine deck which was nice looking for the i was again i was going to drop if he stayed still i was going to drop the hesh shell straight through his lower plate because it can go through the lower plate but he moved and now again we re there we go we load the hesh around and go through his lower plate because we can just keep dealing these high damage rolls we're up to 5.3k damage and so far we are working over the enemy team with this gun because they keep pushing into position where we can just get some nice damage out and unfortunately that shell ricochets on the m48 pad i'm not quite sure how well it just he pulled back at the exact moment where i fired and unfortunately it went right to the right hand side of the reticle and bounced we did try an rbrt and hesh shell there through the side of the m48 not not sure why we tried that but it was, just wasn't going to work and we're just going to try and poke and see if we can get any shots into anyone because it's kind of awkward at this moment in time the t95 e3 pokes over and it's like well let's get a nice shot into him that puts him down to a one shot and now we can shut this guy down if we can get a shot at him so we poke over aim the shot and it hits the floor and yeah, if this is a what if. If we'd managed to kill that T95 E3 a bit earlier, we'd have been able to deal with this T100. And unfortunately, we'd end up popping smoke probably just a little bit too early because this guy couldn't get the gun depression there. We popped the smoke a little bit too early. But we get a nice Hesh shell through him. We get another Hesh shell through. But unfortunately, at this point, because the YOLO's over, we are dead. But unfortunately enough for me, well, fortunately enough for our team, he dies straight after anyway. Finish with the victory. Three kills, 7.3k damage. Really high damage total game for the Charioteer. Really nice game. And um, we, we just managed to farm in that. 946 assistance. The Ace Tanker. 806 base XP. A really great game for the Charioteer. A, honestly, a very fantastic Era 1 Western Alliance tank destroyer. It does just does everything so well. And 10 degrees of gun depression. It's so flexible. Camo, mobility, everything. It's a very fun tank to play. So as always, everybody, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time. A great success!